Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church on such a delightful, beautiful Sunday morning. We're glad you're here, and all of you who are watching online, welcome as well. We're going to start our service right now by singing our opening chant, One with the One. Good morning, everyone. So glad you're here. I'm Reverend Sydney, and we live, we move, and have our being in God, but guess what? God lives and moves and has its being in us, and with that in mind, I invite you to silence your cell phones. Everybody say hi to our live streamers. Hi, Zoomies and Facebookers. Let's pray, shall we? So we just turn within, recognizing the infinite presence and power that we call God has brought us together as a celebration of that limitless love, that limitless creativity, that limitless expression of divinity and joy. And knowing that we have all been brought together in that unified intention of love, of oneness, of wholeness, I speak my word now and know that this service is a fabulous, dazzling, radiant idea in the mind and the heart of God. And how wonderful to know that that divine choreographer has brought us here to dance that dance, to sing that song. And I know that the voice is absolutely clear and expressive and fabulous and wonderful as it comes through our beloved Dr. Mark. And I know that the music today supports us in opening up and being receptive and shifting into a higher vibration of knowing. I bless everyone here, those who have come to be served, those who are serving. And I know that each of us, each of us is part of that wonderful tapestry of God. I am grateful to know this and I release this word into law knowing it is already so. We have simply recognized that which is. So I say, and so it is, so it is and I invite you to say with me, amen. Thank you very much. of God I hold you 
rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we're going to sing our congregational song, which is, drum roll, make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. Lift your voices to the sky. Make a joyful noise to your source and your supply. Celebrate as one. For this time we share. Celebrate as one. Unified as we declare. God is love. God is peace. God is joy. So now we are going to enter into a period of silent meditation. You know, the voice within will not shout over the chatter within, and it will not shout over those conversations. So this is why we turn within and we listen. And I invite you to use this phrase, God's the love that I am. God's the love that I am, to just draw you in deeper into a place of peace and knowing. And I will bring us out after five minutes.
Let the peaceful waters tumble down my soul. Let me live in this moment and watch it all unfold. Let this joyful feeling come from deep inside and lift my spirit. Closer to the light oh, 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 I'm letting go oh, 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 I'm letting go I'm gonna roll with the tide Surrender to the highs and lows to the pull of the moon in the ebb and flow I am lost in stillness of a silent prayer just the movement of breath and a heartbeat there Let the peaceful waters tumble down my soul. Let me live in this moment and watch it all unfold. Let this joyful feeling come from deep inside. Oh, and lift my spirit closer to the light. All right, good morning. Welcome, it's good to have you here. Whether you're with us virtually or in person, I'm so happy you're with. You know, about um, 2,500 years ago, Buddha lived, and one of his great gifts to humanity was this eightfold path. Now, Moses uh, was leading the children of Israel, and he got the Ten Commandments. So I was thinking about both of these things, and I realized that they both have to do with teaching humanity something about morality. Because before people had these guidelines, think about it, they were just wild. There were no guidelines, there were no rules for anything. So we have these wild people. Now it's difficult for people if we're just wild, I love that word, wild, um, <laughs> to advance spiritually, right? So, so part of it is part of getting on any spiritual path, I think, part of, part of why we go to church is because there is something about morality there. You know, I think it's, it's so curious today that, um, you know, actors and sports stars and politicians are our moral compass. Not, nah, sorry, I just had to say that, you know. No, uh, just, that it's, I think, you know, the idea of America is such an extraordinary big idea that it could only take place where there had never been a monarchy, right? 
But because we've never had a monarchy, I think we, we're so desperate for heroes that we look to people who do other things to be our heroes. Now, I think it's wonderful that people act. I love entertainment as much as everybody does. And I think it's great that there are people who excel at sports. That's wonderful, great entertainment. You know, and I, on and on and on. And I think it's beautiful that people are called to public service as a politician. That's also a beautiful, beautiful thing. But I don't look to those individuals to be my moral compass, right? What we teach in the science of mind is that there is a principle and a power and a presence and it resides within us. And if we will turn to it with some regularity, it will reveal to us exactly what it is that we need to know, do, or be at any given moment on the journey. I think when we understand our relationship to the principle, power, and presence that is within us, and, and we have some understanding of how the mind, our mind works, that we have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind, and then there's the world of form, that it makes sense that we would want to find the best way to impress our subconscious mind with good ideas, with good possibilities, with good intentions. See, because simply an intellectual understanding of spiritual truth is not enough. Right? If that were so, <laughs> you know, we probably wouldn't be here, right? Because we'd already have it all. We'd already understand it all. All the mysteries would have been revealed. See, it doesn't bring the results we want, having just that intellectual understanding of truth. It's, it, there really is something about an embodiment. So think about this. What gives things weight in nature is gravity, right? So in space... There's no gravity. So a rock in space doesn't weigh anything. You'd be a giant boulder in space, and you could just go poof, and it would just move that way. And you would move this way, I think, as I understand it. Because space is a higher level from Earth, right? OK, so that makes sense. So Jesus gave this teaching. He says, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So I must be in the place in consciousness. I want to be in the place in consciousness where my yoke is easy, you know, that which is before me, that which I carry, that which I have to pull through life, however we want to articulate that, is easy and my burden is light. Where is that place? Where is that place in consciousness? So what I know from my study is that Jesus has risen above or he overcame the world vibration and functioned in the fourth dimension, which is love. Now, this is the goal for all of us, to be in that fourth dimensional consciousness, to get to that place where we are functioning as love in the world. So the, the dimension, uh, this fourth dimension, I think, is also the dimension of perfection, of joy, of all needs met, wholeness. You know, so Jesus said, Come unto me, all of ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I don't think that's anything about him as a personality. I think there's an invitation here, right? Come up to a higher level of consciousness, and that higher level of consciousness is what will give you reprieve. It's what will give you rest. So in Psalm number 55, we are told to cast thy burden upon the Lord. So for so I'm going to share with you how I learned this many years ago when I first came into metaphysics. And people used to say it like this, I cast this burden upon the Christ within, and I am set free. Now, if, if the Christ pushes your buttons, then say something else, okay? Don't run from church. Say the light within, or the love within, or the infinite invisible presence within me. So if you... if, if Christ isn't it for you, then something else is, and I'm going to suggest it's love or light. Okay, so, so those, those are our choices this morning. Uh, numerous times in the Bible, it says the battle is God's, not man's, right? And that our job is to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. So to me, this means that the Spirit of God within, that place within me, that place within you, that is the highest and best within us, is what fights the battle and relieves us of the burden. So you know, we violate spiritual law if, if we think the burden is ours to carry. I don't think we were created for that. It is not ours to carry. Remember, Ernest Holmes gave this very, very simple teaching. He used to open his radio shows with it every time. He would say, there is a power for good in the universe, and you can use it. So this is one of the ways that we use the power for good in the universe in an intelligent way. 
right? If, if we are thinking this is mine to carry, then, then, then we're missing the point. See, a burden, I think, is an adverse thought. A burden is an adverse condition. Something we know could be a little better, it could be a little improved, it could be a little more loving, it could be a little lighter, it could be a little more healed. Now, whatever that is, it has its roots in our subconscious mind. Now, Ernest Holmes says you have a conscious mind, the mind that's thinking right now, and you have a subconscious mind. And that subconscious mind is the soul level, it's the law, and he says it's the seat of memory. Everything that you've ever done, everything that's ever been done to you, it's all, everything that's ever been said to you, everything you've ever said, it all exists in your subconscious mind. Mm. So it's scientific, it seems to me, to cast the burden on the Christ within, the superconscious mind where it is made light, right? Or dissolved into nothingness, right? So how, how might we work with this? So let's say your burden is something around lack right now, right? So I, I would say to myself, and I would do this a lot, I would say, I cast this burden of lack upon the Christ within, and I go free to have plenty. Something like that. Right? So it's just a way that I'm going to talk to myself again. And rather than let the world around me talk me down, or my own thinking talk me down, I'm going to talk myself up to a little bit higher vibration. In this case, I think our belief in lack is actually the burden. See, So I cast this burden of lack on the spirit of God within, and I go free to have plenty. I cast this burden of, I don't know, what else, what else are we burdened with? Resentment. Okay, I cast this burden of resentment on the infinite invisible, and I go free to be loving, harmonious, and happy. Right? See, I, I cast this burden on the Spirit of God within me, and I go free. So we can use this as a mantra in spiritual practice over and over and over again. Now, I'll tell you my experience of this is that when I use this, when I'm sitting in prayer and I'm saying this to myself over and over again, I really get the sense of being lighter and lighter and lifted up and lifted up. And what I imagine is I'm being lifted above the condition. That for a moment, my consciousness is going above the level of consciousness where I'm involved in this condition that is so disharmonious to me. So after a while of doing this, I really do see more clearly, and I'm certain that you will too. See, we can't see clearly with only the carnal mind, right? With my everyday downtown thinking, I'm not going to get clarity. I'm going to get more doubt. I'm going to get fear because that's downtown thinking, right? It, that, that's just poisoning the mind and the body and the imagination. You know, my ima I don't know about you, but my imagination can run riot with the best of them. You know, but I know that what that does, according to the science of mind teaching, if I let my imagination do that, I'm attracting to me conditions I do not want. I'm attracting to me disasters and diseases and on and on and on. But when my vision, when your vision clears, you know, eventually what happens is that manifestation comes forward. Right? So we hear about darkness before the dawn, right? You always hear, oh, it's always darkness before the dawn. I've always heard that. And before a big demonstration, it often seems, before we have a big healing, you know, it often seems like everything goes wrong, you know? Uh, and, and, and deep depression can absolutely cloud your consciousness. It, it, it means that out of the subconscious mind, what's rising are the doubts and fears of the ages. Now, I believe these can be your doubts and fears. I, could be, I believe that these can also be the doubts and fears that maybe you grew up with, maybe the doubts and fears of your siblings or your parents or your grandparents or your friends, but people who really had influence on you. These things are rising up to the surface to be put out, to be dissolved, released, and let go, never to return again. So how long do I remain in the dark is the question we ask as metaphysicians. It's like, okay, I'm dealing with the dark the appearance of darkness. How long do I remain in the appearance of darkness until you can see in the dark? And I know, the first thing we think, well, you can't see in the dark. It's like, of course you can. We've all done it. We all do it again and again and again. To impress our subconscious mind, we have to have what I think of as a really active faith. You know, I, I, I'm, look, I'm a big, big affirmer. You know? 
and I think it comes out of the fact that I've been talking to myself for years, and when I came into Science of Mind, I realized I needed to say good stuff to myself as opposed to a lot of the crap I was saying to myself, right? So if you say good stuff consistently, it programs your subconscious mind because you know what you say again and again and again, your subconscious mind grabs it and says, okay, this must be what we're supposed to produce. This must be what we're supposed to be working on because he's talking about it so darn much, right? So now, that works in either way. If you're always talking about how sick you are, the subconscious mind will say, well, he must really want to be sick because he talks about it an awful lot. But by the same token, if you talk about health all the time, the subconscious mind says, you know, he must want more health because he's talking about health all the time. It's simply what you focus on increases. We know that in science of mind. Energy goes where energy flows. So we can all see in the dark. You know? That's how long we have to remain there until we can see. You know? I think also, I was thinking about this, and I think when, uh, when we're younger and we play make-believe, you know, kids play make-believe all the time, right? The subconscious mind gets impressed when you play make-believe. So when we were all children, we probably did this all the time. And now in the Bible, it says, unless you become as little children, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So I think there's something there, may, and it may be about make-believe. You know, it may be about acting as if a little bit. It may be about seeing something on the inside that we don't yet see on the outside. Mm -hmm. So we want, I think we won't be peaceful. We won't be happy until we've erased all that stuff in the subconscious that I'm just going to say is basically fear. Right? It's just some form of fear. Or, and fear is always misdirected energy. You know, it must be directed, redirected, and transformed into faith. I say, well, well I just don't know. How, how can I possibly get rid of the fear? Because, you know, I have fear about you know, the environment, and I have fear about world peace and war that's happening, and I have fear about this, and I have fear about that, and I have fear about traffic, and I'm going to worry about the dolphins and the whales and the environment and what's happening with plastic and the ocean and on, and, and I could just spin myself into such a tizzy that I become paralyzed. Do you know what I mean? That, that you can just get so worked up about all the things that need attention, all the things that are an opportunity for transformation and healing and to raise the vibration. And frequency. You know, if I just think about all that, I'm going to get really depressed, right? But I have to redirect that fearful energy. It must be directed and transmuted into faith, right? So how do I get rid of that? Well, one possibility, just one possibility, and I know this is not for everyone and this is not in every situation, but one possibility is certainly to walk up to what you fear. You know, I remember um, some months back, uh, we were feeding the homeless. And a family from church asked about bringing their little girl. Could their young daughter come to uh, the lunch where we were going to feed uh, lunch in the park? I'm, I'm trying not to say feeding the homeless. It just sounds so dismissive. We were having lunch in the park, and people came. And uh, so I said, yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think it's absolutely uh, safe. And you know, we'll uh, come, and we'll put her to the, your child will stand between the parents. And, you know, she'll be perfectly safe, you know. And so that's, that's what we did. And this little girl had a fantastic experience. She, she, but she had just had fear, for whatever reason, around people who were on the street. And now here they were coming up, and she's serving them food, and they were very nice, and they were polite, and she was lovely to them. And, and it, at the end, she was just having a great time. And so to me, that's a healing, right? That right there is a healing. So, you know, the subconscious is impressed with God, with, with this idea that God is the giver and God is also the gift. Therefore, as, uh, because we are one with the giver, that means we are also one with the gift already. You know, the, the universe only knows to say yes, right? You know, for so long, it seems like humankind has separated, separated itself from its good, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's greater expression. I think um, through thoughts of lack and not enoughness, um, that people don't really step into their own life so often 
because they're just so afraid that life is not going to be there. There's, there's, there's not going to be a floor there. You know, what is it? There's one of those Indiana Jones movies. I love this one. I, I don't think it was the first one, but one of, there's one of those Indiana Jones movies where he has to step off a cliff, and, but there's an invisible bridge. But the bridge doesn't actually materialize until he's stepped off the cliff. Do you remember that? I don't remember, maybe it's like Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull or something like that. But I love that because, which one? Last Crusade. Last Crusade, thank you, thank you. God, I love Hollywood, it's just great. <laughs> But, you know, but, but it's such a great image, and I think that is so often like so many things. They say that when Moses was leading the children of Israel and they were going to cross the Red Sea, they say that the water, now I don't know if this is true, I wasn't there, but they say that the water did not actually part until everyone was in the water. And it's like, wow, that's a lot of faith. That's a lot of faith. You're like, I'm not getting in that water. No, come on in, come on in. It's not gonna, it's gonna part, but it won't part till everybody's in the water. Right? It won't part for everybody's in the water. Ah, so we could ask ourselves, we could ask ourselves, am I guided by fear or am I guided by faith? Mm -hmm. And I think we live in a world that is largely guided by fear right now. And so it becomes our job to be the people who are guided by faith. You know, somebody's got to hold the light. Somebody, please, hold the light. It's got to be us. You know, Scripture says, choose ye this day whom you will serve. So we're going to serve fear or we're going to serve faith. We're going to serve God or we're going to serve mankind. Right? So we draw to us what vibrates at the same level as us. So just think about that. Hmm, where's my consciousness? Where's my thinking? Where's my heart? What level am I really vibrating? What frequency am I sending out into the universe? Because that's what's coming back to each and every one of us. You know, it says in the scripture again, in the twinkling of an eye, I love that, like in an instant, in an instant, our release will come when we realize that there really is no power, no presence, no principle outside of God. Let's pray. Thank you. So we take a moment to turn our attention inward now to just become still and remember that right here where we are, the place whereon we stand is holy ground, that we are surrounded and we are filled with God's infinite, loving, intelligent spirit, a spirit that knows itself by means of us. We are each a place where the light and love of God is revealed like no place else. And so in this awareness of our oneness with God and our connection with each other, I ask each and every one of us this morning to bring to mind whatever burden we are dealing with in life. It might be a relationship challenge or a money thing. It could be a health thing. It could be a peace of mind or our creative expression. Doesn't matter. But just call to mind whatever you think of as the burden that you are dealing with right now. And I invite you to silently say with me, I cast this burden on the Christ within. Again, if Christ doesn't work for you, pick something else. Pick love, pick light. I cast this burden on the light within. I cast this burden on the light within. Knowing that the principle and power and presence that is within you, that's greater than you are, and yet you are a part of it, is working with you and in you and through you to reveal a greater good. I accept this is so for each and every one of us. I cast this burden on the truth within, and I am set free. And so we bring to mind all of those situations in the world that we live in that pull at our attention, that perhaps make us fearful or doubting, and we know that the principle, the power, the presence of the one life is right there in all people, in all circumstances. And so we open our heart just a little bit more and let an energy of love and peace and blessing emanate out from us to touch every person on the face of the globe, excluding no one, no one. Knowing this can be difficult, we'll stay with it because we're committed to this path, including everyone on the face of the earth in our prayer, showering them with love and peace and goodwill we include our family members and friends, parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear, the people we think of as our community, whether that's here at church or elsewhere. We see the players in our mind's eye and we wrap our spiritual arms around them. We surround them with love and goodwill and blessings and peace. 
We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that there is raising up for all of us, that we are healed in this moment. We feel it. We sense it. We accept it. And so with a full heart, I say, thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word into law. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. guided by faith rather than fear because I wrote it with my friend Faith Rivera. Yeah. <laughs> we don't necessarily look to our politicians or athletes or musicians to be our moral compass or true north but we can cast our burdens to the light within as we move forth through the darkness we can shine there's a burning feeling in the bottom of your soul that only your heart understands everybody's got a little love inside to give away all we really need is a chance time is wasted you don't have to wait another minute to let your dreams take you Never had a moment in your life when you were free enough to let yourself go. It's okay to take a little leap of faith sometime, or how will you ever know? The world is waiting for you to share the gifts that you've been given. It's never too late for a new beginning. Shine on.
wasted You don't have to wait another minute To let your dreams take you to the just want to take him home with you? Yeah. You know, you can. <laughs> Pretty good segue, huh? Harold Payne Music, that's P-A-Y-N-E dot com. And it's where, I have known this guy for how many years? God, we go back a long way. And yeah, I, I just, so yes, thank you so much for being here. And thank you, Sam, and thank you, Bob. You guys are just, you're amazing. <laughs> So if it's your first time here today, I, we want to welcome you. We're glad that you were able to join us. We have so much information about this place. As you head out the door, turn to your left. We have a welcome table all about with information about groups and stuff that's going on. And we also have a packet, a welcome packet, that will really kind of unpack for you what we do and who we are. And hopefully that might uh, interest you. <laughs> so we make it really easy for you to make donations and tithes to this church. If you open up that bulletin you received when you walked in, at the bottom of the page is a text to tithe phone number. What is my problem with speaking today? Okay, text to tithe number. And on the back of it, there is a QR code. Take you right where you need to be. Uh, Prayer with a practitioner is available after the service. In the room, please come up to the front. If you are on Zoom, then you will be um, given access to a practitioner. Just let the, the host know that that's what you want. If you're on Facebook, you're going to have to hop over to Zoom. On Wednesday evening, this week, May 4th, Joanne O'Brien is doing her Taze service. And it's wonderful, right? Sacred chanting, readings and meditation, and a potluck afterwards. So bring your favorite food to share. That starts at 6.50, and then the service itself, ah, 7 o'clock. Men's group today is at 11 o'clock. Ernest Holmes' room and on Zoom, all men are welcome. The women's group is having a tea party today. <laughs> At 1 p.m., only in person, because it's tough to drink tea online, or I guess you can, but they're not doing it today. So it's in our, our youth church room. Um, all women are welcome. So if you're here now, go home, get a hat, and come on back. One o'clock. You don't have to wear your hat. Next uh, Sunday, the band will be here, right? Yes. Yeah, that's going to be a great... And it's Mother's Day, so bring mom. Bring everybody. Uh, save the date. On Sunday, May 15th, we are having a thing here at 1 o'clock with our member, Bess Fanning. She is presenting the climate crisis, California, and its solutions. Now, this is a free presentation, and it'll be here in the room only, but there's so much information that she's going to give us about being part of the solution. Um, and in line with that, food in the park, picnic in the park, that same day is when we are going to be working with our brothers and sisters who are experiencing food insecurity or are on the street. So 
there's a sign up on the patio. You can bring food for that. And we invite you to do that. It's going to be a wonderful thing. We do this the third Sunday of every month. So please take a look at that. Um, in October, Dr. Mark is going to Japan. And some of you are going to go with him. So if you want to go and join on this wonderful spiritual retreat and adventure, please get some information. There's a flyer out in the, the foyer, and there's also more information, I believe, on the table. So I hope that you will think about that. It's going to be pretty spectacular. Zoom virtual patio before and after our Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation. Now, this is really cool. Um, Monday through Saturday, 7.55 to 8.15, you can go to our website, get the link, and meditate with about 30 or 40 other fabulous people, and it really helps to know that you are joined in consciousness with others. So there's more information. Go to our website, nhcrs.org. You can get all sorts of links and, and information. We're about to launch our new website, by the way, so keep checking back because you're really going to like that. And I'm going to shut up now because we're going to stand up and sing the peace song. <laughs> Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.